And welcome back to Morning Joe. 42 past the hour. Beautiful shot as the sun comes up. Days are getting a little longer now, or it's lighter later at least. Steve Schmidt uh, still with us at the table here. Game Change uh, premiered on Saturday. Uh, we saw it last week. So the question for you is, A, what did you think of it? B, was it accurate? It was very accurate. I think for all of us who were in the campaign, it really rang true. It gave you a little bit of PTSD at times. Brings you back, definitely, huh? <laughs> definitely did for me. But um, look, I, I think it's a story of when cynicism and idealism collide, when you have to do the things that are necessary to win, to try to get in office, to do the great things you want to do for the country. And I think it um, showed a process uh, of vetting that was debilitated by secrecy, that was compartmentalized, that, that failed, that led to a result that was reckless uh, for the country. And um, I, I think when you look back at that race, you see this person who's just so phenomenally talented at so many levels, an ability to connect, but also someone who had a lot of flaws as someone uh, running, you know, to be in the National Command Authority, who clearly wasn't prepared. You really see in the movie the circumstances under which you guys decided to do it and why you did it. You said, we're dead unless we do something sure. bold. So you, so you pick Sarah Palin, you get a bounce coming out of the convention. Uh, at the end of the day, given what you know now, Sarah Palin a net positive or net negative for that campaign? Politically, she was a net positive to the to the campaign. John McCain lost that race because the global economy imploded in the middle of September and we were outspent by two hundred fifty million dollars. I think a net negative in the sense that someone was nominated to the vice presidency who was manifestly unprepared to take the oath of office should it become necessary and as it has become necessary many times in America. This will sound strange though to people watching because you're the guy who picked her to say that she was manifestly unprepared. Do you think it was reckless of you and well, your team? I, I, was part of a, I was part of a team that settled on the, on the result. You know, I didn't you know, wake up one day and say let's pick her. Yeah. But, um, there's a scene in the movie where I'm saying to Senator McCain, it's almost verbatim the conversation that happened, that I would rather lose by 10 points trying to win than lose by one point and look back and say, did we do everything we could to win? And for me, the experience on this campaign is that there are worse things than losing. So um, the movie, I think m many agree, showed a sympathetic side to her. Sure. Um, and, and you can see that uh, during the process when you're watching. When, the when movie. I watched the movie, and I obviously had a, a very difficult relationship with her during the campaign, but obviously. I remembered in watching that movie why I liked her so much, particularly in the beginning. So, looking back at everything, can you see how, in some ways, it was an unfair experience for her as well? Um, I think it was a very difficult experience for her. Uh, I look at the movie, I look at myself in the mirror. You look at these people when they're running for president and vice president, not the way you look at people that you encounter every day in your life. We wanted her to perform. We wanted her to, to, to go out there and to do this. And this was a person who was in distress um, at, at some points during this campaign. And I, I look at, did I do as a person, did I interact with a person who was in distress? the way that you would want to interact with a person in distress. And I don't always think uh, that I did a great job on that. Mm. So, so wow. Steve, right, right now, obviously, Santorum and Romney and Gingrich yeah. are all thinking about whom their running mates would sure. be. What advice would you, what's the most important advice or takeaway lesson you have from uh, the decision-making process? Even when I'm on Palin? television, Harold, and we talk about this, we get asked the question all the time. The conversation is never about, is this person prepared to be president? And it's does this person help with Latinos in this swing state? What political problem does it solve? And I think the lesson of all of this is the rigor that a campaign should put this through. It should be staffed like a presidential decision, not like a campaign decision. We made a campaign decision, not a presidential decision. You know, you, you were saying a couple of minutes ago that what the campaign, what, among the many things the campaign taught you, that you learned from the campaign, was that there are worse things than losing. Spell that out. What's, what's worse in that context? What's worse in that context for me is with regard to the country that I love, that I have family members in the uniformed services of the country and the, arm, and the armed services. We have 100,000 people in Afghanistan. 
when when a result uh, happens that puts someone who's not prepared to be president on on the ticket, that's a, that's a bad result. Um, I, I think the notion of Sarah Palin being president of the United States um, is something that frightens me, frankly. Um, and I played a part in that. And I played in part in that because we were fueled by ambition to win. And I think that ambition to, to, to win, to victory, it's what drives people in politics. Um, it is a chess match in a, in a lot of ways, but that, but that result and how we got there is something that, that troubles me a lot wow. and, and doesn't, doesn't stand the test of time, in my view. Huh. And, I, and I, think there are, I think there are important lessons to learn. The reality is, is that both parties have nominated people in the last decade who were not prepared to be anywhere near the Oval Office. John Edwards in the Democratic Party, Sarah Palin in the Republican Party. And we ought to take a pause and understand how that happened, why it happened, and hopefully it'll never happen again in our lifetimes. Wow, mm. be honest. Uh, Andrea Mitchell, we saw you at the uh, premiere, the glamorous premiere, very <laughs> glamorous Andrea Mitchell was there in the front row. What did you think of the movie and, and what went through your mind watching well, it, looking back? I yeah, I thought it was extraordinary, the performances, the, uh, the characterizations, and I was deeply troubled, as Steve has just explained, mm. by the way we choose our running mates. Not only, of course, the way we choose our candidates, and the fact that Palin and, as you correctly point out, John Edwards were so unqualified at that moment in time to be anywhere near a campaign and anywhere near the Oval Office. I'm wondering, Steve, whether you think Palin... Uh, is now a different person and whether hmm. she has the qualifications because we've heard ruminations about her playing some role at the convention whether you think that she has a future as a national leader in the republican party um i i hope not and <laughs> the reason i say that is because if you look at it over the last four years all of the deficiencies in, in knowledge all the deficiencies in preparedness she's done not one thing to rectify them to correct them she has become a person who I think is filled with grievance, filled with anger, who has a divisive message for the national stage when we need leaders at both parties to have a unifying message. There's this great scene in the Paula Broadwell book, the great biography she just finished about General Petraeus, who's talking to it's one of his book. protégés and says to him, what's the definition of needless slaughter? And the young soldier has no idea, and, and Petraeus' response, it's the Battle of the Somme, where 65,000 British soldiers were killed on the first day of battle. That's why you need to go get a graduate education, so you have a sense of history, and the Army's leaders are prepared to avoid the mistakes of yesterday, tomorrow. Mm. And I think that's important, and I think the lack of preparedness was a, was a bad thing, and the total disinterest in being more prepared in rectifying that um, is something that I think disqualifies. Yeah. And it, well said. It's such a, incredibly said, uh, such a brutal process, and yet perhaps she's still taking it personally, which is not necessarily a good offer as a candidate. Uh, coming up, Mitt Romney told a crowd in Mississippi last week that he's begun to say y'all and eat grits. Newt Gingrich spent the weekend proving that to the South that he likes grits more. Okay. We'll have that back and forth next on Morning Joe. <laughs>